Last week, over 7 million viewers tuned in to watch Emma Dale as heartbroken Aaron Livesey fed his tetraplegic partner, Jackson Walsh, a cocktail of drugs in order to help him commit suicide, whilst Jackson's mother, Hazel, looked on. Now, it was a tragic storyline, but just one of many that's made Emma Dale a success for almost 40 years. I love you. They said that you won't walk again. Somebody hit you over the head. Look, this has gone far enough. You've made your point. The roof's on fire. It was you. Don't you dare touch me! Oh. Oh. Stand it up now! Me and you are over whatever happens. You're sleeping with his daughter and her mum. Your baby does have Down syndrome. You hurt me so much. There Look at what we've become! Some incredible storylines there, and we are joined now by actor Mark so, um, Slycock, who played um, Jackson and Emmerdale boss, and series producer Stuart Blackburn. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. Right. Thanks um, for having us. Now I've got I've, I've, I've got to go straight to um, the storyline last week, which obviously you were you were heavily involved in. Mm. I mean, you were very very careful because you decided to not do any press beforehand, obviously, and um, see how the public reacted to it. And um, what has the reaction been like? I mean, all I can say from my point of view, it's been brilliant. I mean, the one thing we knew and wanted was debate, and that's what we've got. Um, I think overall, there have been some complaints, yeah, and some people aren't happy with the way we told it. We understood that and appreciated it, but I think overall, it's gone down incredibly well, and we're now sat here having an adult debate about the issues it raised. It's a difficult topic to cover because of the time that Emmerdale is on, yeah. um, and a lot of people said this is before the watershed, and that and that was the issue that they took. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, we have got to stick to really, really strict rules, um, and you know, my family watched this show as well. You know, I'm thinking about my mum and dad, um, cousins, aunties. You know, I don't want to go out to offend, and we tried at every level to be as sensitive as we possibly could, and I think we achieved that. Yeah, and I think so as, as well. But I, why did you decide to go along that route and tackle this storyline? Um, I can't think of anything more fundamental for me than, you know, have we got a right to die at a time and place and means of our choosing. It's such a fundamental thing about <laughs> us as humans. Um, Thank you. And great drama puts people in the position where they're going, what would I do if I was in, say, Jackson's position or mm -hmm. Hazel's position? It was just such a powerful and emotive story. Uh, well, Mark Silcock is Jackson, so, mm -hmm. uh, so this is a tough one for you to play um, and, you, it, and something that you took very seriously. Yeah, uh, when I got told about the storyline last year with uh, Gavin Blythe, um, I asked him whether he thought I could do it or not because it was the very first time working at Emmerdale that I took the job seriously, really. And, he said he's got better things to do than waste his time with me if he, if he didn't think I could do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a, I took it extremely seriously. I did a lot of research into the part and got a lot of books and a lot of support from Stuart and from everybody at work um, to help me get in and find out what it's like because I think the, you know, the details make it perfect and that was really important. And really emotional scenes for you and for um, Danny and um, for Pauline to mm. film together as well. Was so it really challenging as an actor? Yeah, normally we have a bit of a laugh on set. The last couple of weeks weren't much fun, uh, but it's all part of the job. We have to get it right and everyone knows when to have a laugh and everyone knows when to be serious. Well, Ofcom had to assess um, what they said was a handful of complaints, yeah. so this isn't very many complaints yeah. to Ofcom, and we know that, 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 that people do now use that route quite vigorously yes. if they want to complain. Um, Aspire, which is a spinal cord injury charity, said and I quote, this storyline had the potential to be groundbreaking in its approach to disability and to challenge misguided opinions on spinal cord injury. Instead, too often the script has opted for poor stereotypes or sensational misrepresentation. Yeah, well, obviously I'm going to say that's not the case. I think at every level, for me, you know, th this story was about proving in one way that disability spinal injuries aren't a barrier to a full and active life. I think in the character of Steve, there's a character who is tetraplegic, who is married, who's looking forward to having a family, who's got a job. But most importantly for Jackson, from skydiving to sailing to going to the football, we absolutely demonstrated his injuries were no barrier to a full life. What it came down to, though, was for Jackson, 
it was his choice. Yeah. And and also you are I mean you are being responsible with the aftermath as well aren't you? Absolutely the story doesn't end here um, all actions have a consequence and just because Hazel and Aaron in particular did this doesn't mean over the fullness of time they're going to come to think it was a good thing or the right thing at the right time. And what about what about you because obviously that means that you left what, about six months ago was it? Uh, about six weeks ago yeah I finished about six weeks ago so yeah just looking for work and hopefully like I said I found the I found a work ethic at Emmerdale that I didn't really know I had for the job until I worked with, you know, Mark Charnock and Don Brunt, everybody else like that really got me into it. So I'm taking it very seriously as a job and as a career and as a craft now. So, yeah, it's looking you for You learn work. your craft really well there because it's a very fast turnaround as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. We film a lot. We film a lot very quickly. I mean, one day I think we had to do sort of 48 pages in one day. And it is it's a brilliant place to learn. It's fantastic. But that's what always amazes me. When people are then going about, um, oh, there's a maybe a live episode next year for the 40th <laughs> you effectively are filming it as live because you don't really do that many retakes anyway do you it's two films a week we're making making yeah. essentially mm. it's massive <laughs> yeah uh, but uh, but for the live one interestingly yeah. i mean like you would you i would have thought more than all of the other continuing dramas uh, would find it difficult because you <laughs> you're, you're so your studio yeah. is your outside set so far apart. Eight miles. Um, if we're going to have somebody in the wool pack and coming out, we'd probably have to have them in the wool pack minute one and coming out the very final minute. So it would be incredibly difficult. The rumours of the live app are just that, rumours. Are they? Are they? Just rumours. We could do it. Yeah. And never say never. There yeah. is a little bit of me that's always really excited by that, but the just rumours. The 40th will be massive. Yeah. There is, there is a, a rumour as well, another rumour that it could be another disaster. But, like, you remember when it became Emmerdale, as opposed to Emmerdale Farm, there was the plane crash, could there be? Well, because you're newly branded, you've got all yeah. your new branding. Absolutely, absolutely. And, again, it's just rumours. <laughs> yeah. I think there is a danger of these big stunts that eventually, from the audience's point of view, it's just another stunt. Let's, uh, let's get some, some comments from Colin, who's... Uh, who's in the hub. What have you got, Colin? Uh, well, this is a question for Stuart. Donna Woods has emailed in and she says, can we have any spoilers about what is going to happen to Aaron next? Will there be a trial? There will be a trial, yeah. Um, it's going to be a long, long journey for Aaron. Um, we're storylining story now right up to October, November, and he's still trying to come to terms with what he's done. Um, these are actions that he's taken that he's going to have a lot of remorse and regret about, and the real trial is amongst the village, the Chazzies, the Paddies, who are having to step up the mark and deal with the after-effects of this. So there's a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, exciting. Um, and another um, question for Mark. Um, as it was an emotional role, did you find it easy to leave it at work and not take it home? Yeah, we all go in there and we know we do it that quickly, that you move on every, every minute you finish filming a scene, you then move on to the next one. So if you ended up taking it home with you all the time, you just get dragged down, won't be able to live a normal life. So as soon as the studio does, Open, you get into it and you get on with it, and as soon as they shoot, you leave it behind. So, I mean, what did your girlfriend say about uh, about having you back now full time? Oh, I've got to do a lot more cleaning up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, she, she's fine, she's been really supportive in the, all the hours I was spending at work and coming home and doing all my homework and learning my lines. So, yeah, she was great about it. I think I'm starting to wind up a bit now. She'd <laughs> yeah, yeah. so let you out of the house now. Yeah, just a bit, yeah, yeah just to see some daylight. Last 30 <laughs> seconds, Colleen. Um, yeah, so this is good, actually. Kerry Ross wants to know, uh, Mark, did you accidentally move to scratch your nose, etc., and the crew had to shoot the whole scene again? Uh, no, not really. Well, even when we first started out, I was uh, I was in a coma for a lot of it, so I spent most of the day asleep. But no, I didn't really do it. I concentrated really hard and made sure that it became sort of a habit, really, every time I went on set to stay perfectly still. It was great. Yeah. Well, thank you, you very much. Very Colleen, well. thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's a pleasure much. to have you here.